for the most part it's still in the realm of clinical trials, small groups of dogs, trying to get data together to figure out how best do we use this. It's still in the early stages. So it's definitely a thing that's out there. It's real. It's happening in the world. The thing we don't know yet is the best way to do it. Welcome to Dog Cancer Answers, where we help you help your dog with cancer. Hello, dog lover. I'm Molly Jacobson. I'm the editor-in-chief at dogcancer.com, where we give you better information about dog cancer today so you have no regrets tomorrow. Today's episode is a listener line call where we built an entire show around a question from a listener or a watcher just like you. We've done these shows for years and we wanna do more of them, which is why I want to give you a website to go to dogcancer.com slash ask. We want to hear your questions about dog cancer, any aspect of dog cancer. And we also want to hear your stories. If you've got a dog cancer story that can bring hope and healing to other people who are facing dog cancer, we want to hear it. That's why you should head over to dogcancer.com slash ask and use the form to submit your own video question hopefully with your dog if you can. Tell your own story or share your own question about dog cancer. We'll do our research, we'll talk to experts, and we'll build a show around your question if we think it will hold value for other people. And if your story inspires and uplifts, we'll make that one too. The reason I'm asking for your help with this type of show is because I know for a fact that these shows have an impact long after they're made. There are shows that are still helping dogs today that we made five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. Your voice really matters to our community. There are dogs not yet born who will benefit from the questions and stories that you share today. So go to dogcancer.com slash ask and submit your video. Now let's turn our attention to Mariana and her question about using T-cell infusions to treat her dog Hoya, a Pomeranian, after Hoya finishes up her CHOP protocol for lymphoma. Is this a good idea? Well, our veterinary expert for this show is veterinary oncologist Dr. Megan Duffy, a return expert who's just phenomenal and speaks in plain language and everyday words so that we can all understand exactly what she's saying. And she had a whole bunch of insights into why T-cell infusions might be a valid idea, but maybe not appropriate for Hoya. A lot of factors depend. For example, T-cell infusions are very interesting treatment to explore, but it's not today a routine approach to treating cancer because they're still working some things out. They're working on how to apply it, whether it works better for B-cell or T-cell lymphoma, when to use it with chemotherapy. Do you use it before, do you use it during, or do you use it after chemotherapy is finished? And how big does a dog need to be in order to do this treatment? This treatment involves literally harvesting blood from your dog. So a small dog has less blood and depending on how much blood is needed in order to make the infusion that's then later delivered back into the dog, you might not actually have enough blood supply on hand in your dog. So there's a lot of things to think about and I think it's a really interesting conversation. It's a conversation James Jacobson had with Dr. Megan Duffy about T-cell lymphoma. I'll see you at the other side. Dr. Megan Duffy, thank you so much for being with us again on Dog Cancer Answers. Oh, it's always a pleasure. How can I help? So we have a listener call today um, about T-cell infusion. Let's, let's hear it and then uh, we'll go to you for some comments. Hi, my name is Mariana Diaz and I'm calling from Washington, D.C. My dog's name is Hoya, and she has lymphoma. She was diagnosed back in November, and she is she has almost completed her CHOP protocol, just one more therapy left. She has been in remission since the second treatment, and now we're looking into T-cell infusion. So my question is whether or not you recommend T-cell infusion 
core lymphoma on dogs specifically she's a Pomeranian and we have read a lot about T-cell infusion to help dogs continue to fight the cancer and not relapse. So we're curious whether or not to explore that. So Dr. Duffy, what do you have for Mariana? Yeah, that's really interesting. You know, as far as using the body's own cells to fight cancer, it is a very valid you know, thing to think about. And in people, those um, T cell infusions have been used in a couple of different tumor types to help kind of sustain that response against the cancer itself. And what we know about T cell infusions in dogs and in general is that essentially we take your own healthy T cells, collect them, select specific T cells, grow them up in a lab, kind of prime them to find the cells of interest and then give them back to the dog. And there are some things we need to think about because of course you gotta have functional T cells. So this is for B cell lymphoma more so than T cell lymphoma, at least right now. Gotta have a dog that's big enough that they won't mind that we remove quite a bit of their blood to harvest those T cells. And then looking well, talk about that. So, <laughs> so yeah, how do you how do you harvest T cells from a from a rover? So this is mostly going to be removing quite a bit of blood that is then shipped off to a lab. And I, I worry about that in a little Pomeranian that this is still experimental, but most of the studies using this kind of therapy are asking for dogs that are at least maybe thirty pounds or so, so that hmm. taking that blood sample is okay. Um so it's definitely a thing that's out there. It's real. It's happening in the world. The thing we don't know yet is the best way to do it. So the optimizing, the do we do this again before chemo, after chemo, during chemo? Do we do it when they relapse? How much time does it take? What are the results that we're seeing? We don't quite have that yet. And it doesn't mean that mm -hmm. we shouldn't think about it. But I think it's definitely worth you know, having Mariana ask her oncologist, hey, what is going to be the best way to do this? Is my dog a good candidate? How does all of that work? Um, because, you know, the science is definitely valid and preliminarily there are some really good things here, but we don't quite have all the answers yet. Okay. So have you ever used this T-cell harvesting? I haven't. <laughs> okay. So it is kind of really experimental. Mm -hmm, definitely. And, and, and so, like, when you said it's better for a big dog, it makes me think, what percentage of the blood uh, is kind of like, and like, what is the actual process and, and how much blood is needed? Uh, oftentimes for something like this, it's, it's enough blood that maybe they might need, you know, 20 mils or 30 mils of blood. And if you think about the amount of blood that's drawn for your average CBC or something like that, which might be one mil or two mils that, you know, that volume for a little tiny creature is sometimes not the best situation. And so a lot of it depends on the lab, what they need specifically. And that, that may change over time as well. But it's a consideration if you've got a two pound dog versus a hundred pound dog, just very different blood volumes. So that so they draw it out. It's not, I have this envision uh, this idea that, oh, they, they hook them up to a machine and the blood keeps circulating out and it, it, it strips the T cells. No, it, you literally just need to send the, the, the blood to a lab and the dog does not have that blood anymore. At least how things are, are being done preliminarily, it is a lot of pulling whole blood. Um, you know, when we okay. get into, you know, really filtering the dog's entire bloodstream, kind of like using apheresis in bone marrow transplant, which is mm. another question unto itself, then they are hooked up to a machine that filters their blood. Okay. So that's that's what I was envisioning. Mm. Okay. So that does sound yeah. like a... And, and how new is this this concept? Or, you know, is this something that 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 you guys talk about at, at those oncology conferences or is this is this like so cutting edge it's just way out there in the future this is new enough that i know there are some private companies trying to get it off the ground commercially but for the most part mm. it's still in the realm of clinical trials, small groups of dogs trying to get data together to figure out how best do we use this. So it's not quite ready to say, this is how we're going to change lymphoma treatment. This is the best way to use it. It's still, it's still in the early stages. And I can't help 
but think when when I hear or, or learn about new things like this that are being used in in veterinary cancer, that these are companies behind it that are trying to you know like get some data in veterinary use and, and then apply it to human medicine. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's Is that what you think when you see that as well? There's definitely a lot more data in people, believe it or not. But there's also mm -hmm. a lot more funding in people to, to get this off the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's an expeditious way to, to, to mm -hmm. get some results mm -hmm. that could maybe then be transferred as, as proof of concept to, to people. That's interesting. So in terms of Mariana's case and the size of her dog, probably not something that you would recommend at this point. I think it might be tough unless they have ways of getting around how much blood they need for, for samples and things like that. But still always worth asking because the technology is changing. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Duffy. And thank you, Mariana, for your call. If you, listener, viewer, are interested and would like to ask a question for one of our veterinarians, get in touch with us at Dog Cancer Answers. The number is on your screen or in today's show notes. Thank you again, Dr. Duffy, for being with us. Thank you. And thank you for being here with us today. I hope you found this helpful and hopeful. That's what we do. We help you cope so you can have hope and help your dog. So if you've got a question like Mariana did, if you have a story to share, go to dogcancer.com slash ask and submit it. And maybe we'll make a show out of your submission. Like and subscribe to follow us for more conversations, ideas, shorts, and information about dog cancer. See you soon. Thank you for listening to Dog Cancer Answers. If you'd like to connect, please visit our website at dogcancer.com or call our listener line at 808-868-3200. And here's a friendly reminder that you probably already know. This podcast is provided for informational and educational purposes only. It's not meant to take the place of the advice you receive from your dog's veterinarian. Only veterinarians who examine your dog can give you veterinary advice or diagnose your dog's medical condition. Your reliance on the information you hear on this podcast is solely at your own risk. If your dog has a specific health problem, contact your veterinarian. Also, please keep in mind that veterinary information can change rapidly. Therefore, some information may be out of date. Dog Cancer Answers is a presentation of Maui Media in association with Dog Podcast Network.